Is that all? Okay, fantastic. So hi. Yeah, I am here to do uh, a presentation titled To Name Things Wrongly, Jeanette Winterson's Romantic Taxonomies. And this presentation is about naming and how names pertain to life, identity and self-definition. And this will largely be rooted in Jeanette Winterson's 2019 novel, Frankenstein. And this novel is an adaptation of Mary Shelley's. It is set simultaneously in the labs of contemporary Brexit Britain, in the cryonics facilities of contemporary Arizona, and in early 19th century Europe, where a young Mary Shelley is beginning to write the story that we now know as Frankenstein. And across these really diverse settings, the novel wrestles really with the question of life and its origins. So Winterson, she considers the future of artificial intelligence, the potential end of the human. She considers robotics, prosthetics, sex bots, and how kind of human those kind of robotics or uh, functions are. And finally, she considers the romantic sciences and asks um, sort of where or life originates and who can or should interfere with that. Um, above all else, I think she has one kind of really enduring question, which is how can we define what it is to be human? And this, I think, is when names come in. So Mary, uh, Mary Shelley, in Winterson's imagination, agonizes over names. She's agonizing over the name of her novel, the name of her characters, the name of her monster, and even kind of her own name. Um, and in an early passage, she's struggling to title uh, Frankenstein. She rejects uh, of what we are, and she rejects the new Prometheus, and she rejects even naming the monster or naming the book after the monster. Uh, she says, quote unquote, I am aware that by not naming the thing that haunts my mind, I am repudiating him. But how would we name a new life form? Uh, and this, I think, is where Winterson appears to suggest that it is the act of naming itself that brings something into, into the world. Um, and the implications of this are twofold. Um, firstly, this is why she, Mary Shelley, is both mother and father. This is in the words of her husband, Percy, to her tale. And secondly, it's why she uh, agonizes over doing justice to her namesake, Mary Wollstonecraft, her mother. And so naming here, I think, signifies inheritance. And this really is why Mary names her novel after Frankenstein, the creator, rather than the monster, the creation. Uh, and these issues are echoed throughout the more contemporary passages of Winterson's novel. So back in 21st century Tennessee, Winterson's other protagonist, uh, Dr. Ray Shelley, uh, tours the global tech expo on robotics. And in the adult futures suite, uh, Shelley is introduced to Ron Lord and his new franchise, which is a series of sex dolls. And these XX bots, now available for rental, uh, exist in various models from economy to deluxe. Each model has a different skin tone, a different outfit, a different hairstyle. You can upgrade your doll with uh, better nipples or a wider vocabulary. It's a real, it's a wild ride. <laughs> um, but these dolls are realizations of really familiar fantasies. They're submissive, they're eager, they don't ask questions, they don't have their own needs. Uh, most worryingly, they do not know the word no. Um, but interestingly, Lord uh, chooses not to name his girls, his dolls. He prefers, in his own words, to leave it to the customer to name his bird. And here I think Winterson is playing with her own suggestion that naming gives life. Because what kind of power lies in naming your own doll? And crucially, how does that name affect a sexual relationship with a human person? Um, as Rye comments, as uh, they are shown around this, uh, this tech expo, uh, naming is power. And this is a thread that kind of runs throughout the novel, um, particularly explicitly in an early chapter of the novel. Um, Winterson has a mad scientist kind of character who is this celebrated professor in artificial intelligence named Victor Stein. <laughs> he inherited his name from guess who? And uh, he's delivering a Royal Society lecture on the future of the human. And Stein promises his audience a nearby future of AI in which consciousness will no longer demand embodiment. And one member of his audience is quick to criticize this kind of feigned neutrality of AI, asking, uh, quote unquote, will women be the first casualties of obsolescence in your brave new world? But Stein, interestingly, responds with one quote, and this is an Albert Camus quote, to name things wrongly is to add to the misfortune of the world. And I think this quote is uh, so ironic because Stein's project is to name things wrongly. 
Stein, we learn later in the novel, manages all kinds of highly suspicious projects, think sort of stolen body parts and secret underground labs. Um, but his legitimacy derives from his ability to name things wrongly, uh, to brand this kind of end of the human, end of the world as inevitable, as desirable, as a kind of vision of freedom or a world without labels. Um, I don't think the Brexit commentary from Winterson is particularly subtle here if we're looking for a new free world. Um, but neither, I think, is the critique of British scientific practices historically. So Victor Stein, this mad scientist, accuses scientists of confusing naming with taxonomy. Uh, but this, I would argue, is an accusation we could level at kind of all the scientists known to Mary Shelley. In the novel, she's kind of dealing with romantic sciences. She's quite well versed in this question of life and its origins that is kind of really pertinent at the time. Um, but I would like us to consider, uh, there is a 19th century physician and botanist, William Lord Lindsay, um, who has some really interesting work on plant consciousness. And he kind of memorably characterized the British scientist as a mere collector and nomenclator. So someone who names rather than necessarily comprehends, understands, operates effectively. And I think this is such a useful lens uh, through which to read Winterson's novel. Because, you know, a British scientist for Lindsay is someone who names things wrongly. And a British politician for Winterson is someone who names things wrongly. So I think what Winterson has really cleverly done here is kind of invoke not only Mary Shelley's original novel, but the relevant scientific critiques of the period as well to, to prove the pervasiveness of naming things wrongly in either a scientific or a political project. You know, neither the end of Britain's membership to the EU or the end of the human uh, are going to prove to be our brave new world in this novel. Um, and where this is most important, I think, pertains to the most important name in the novel, which is Rye Shelley. Uh, no surprises that Rye Shelley is inherited from Mary Shelley. Uh, but Rye Shelley is a 21st century doctor in this novel. They work primarily from a lab in Manchester and Rye is trans. Rye is short for Mary. Uh, and throughout the novel, uh, Rye is kind of subjected to deliberate misnaming, misgendering, often deliberately, often mockingly. Um, they identify as not one thing, not one gender. And this identity is interrogated, scorned. In short, they are consistently named wrongly. And contemporary trans scholarship tells us that trans names are crucial modes of both reclamation and self-invention. Um, in Calling Self-Indulgence, Names, Pronouns, Poems, Jay de Leon makes this wonderful argument that trans names and pronouns following Audre Lorde's 1984 articulation are read into the world to give it a new shape. So Lorde's original quote is, poetry is the way we help give name to the nameless so it can be thought. Uh, names for Dillion uh, allow trans and non-binary people to further play with the potentiality of language as a tool of trans futurity. And these ideas are kind of starkly echoed by Winterson, you know, in the whole naming is power thread. Um, in one of Victor Stein's very few kind of apt statements in the novel, he notes that calling things by their right name is more important than by giving them an identity bracelet or a label or a serial number but a kind of the brief analysis of 19th century science I've given here suggests that we have never been good at identities, labels, serial numbers. So I think what Frankenstein's uh, project is, is encouraging us not to name something that isn't either ours or that we can understand. Um, I thought it was interesting that Hugs's call for papers kind of reminded us that humans navigate personal and social relationships in the world through self-definition. And this is where I would like to turn back to De Leon, uh, who writes that we should embrace the queer audacity of naming oneself. Um, and Winterson's novel has been asking, you know, how the question of life has evolved in the two centuries since Frankenstein's original publication. But above all else, I think Winterson's asking us how trans identities require us to redefine the existing taxonomies that we know aren't working. Um, and this, I think, begins with the right name. As Winterson has written so consistently, naming is power um, and it is crucial to do so correctly because as Mary Shelley says herself, language is all we have. Um, yeah, that's all I have today. Thank you so much for listening.